We are brought to Asgard where a young Sylvie is being taken away by the TVA and the person taking her is Ravana. She was taken away because her existence was enough to create a branch line from the sacred timeline. Back to the present, Ravana and Mobius are getting chewed out by the timekeepers. Sylvie and Loki are waiting for the planet to end and Sylvie tells Loki what happened to her as a child. While the TVA searches for them, Sylvie and Loki are able to create a branch line alerting the TVA. The TVA steps in to arrest them as the moon crashes into the planet allowing the two of them to safely return to the TVA. At the TVA, Loki is put in a time loop where Sif would repeatedly punch him in the face and knee him in the balls. Meanwhile, Mobius wants to interrogate Sylvie but Ravana wants him to figure out what the Nexus spike was because she thinks Sylvie is dangerous. When Mobius leaves, he visits B-15 to talk, she asks what Loki said and he tells her that the TVA was lying to them. Loki finally breaks the cycle by being honest with her and shares his feelings. Their chat comes to an end when she tells him that he will always be alone. Loki is called in to speak with Mobius and when he finds out that Sylvie is still alive, he chooses to cover for her. Loki argues that their interests were aligned and it is clear that they have become close over almost dying with the planet. Loki loses patience and informs Mobius of the TVA's truth. He mentions how everyone in the TVA is a variant snatched from the timeline and begs Mobius to see through the TVA's deception. Mobius ignores it, but it is clear he is shocked by what he has heard. Mobius takes Ravana's tempad to check if she's telling the truth when she interrogated C20. When Mobius discovers that she was lying, his entire beliefs collapsed about the TVA. In Sylvie's holding cell, B15 takes Sylvie to the superstore to get Sylvie to reveal the truth about herself. Here we discover that Sylvie's projection can only be triggered by actual memories. B15 appears to be happy as she continues to have flashbacks and she asks Sylvie what they should do next. To destroy the TVA, Mobius decides to work with Loki but sadly, Ravana discovers what he's up to and erases him. Then they escort Loki to the elevator while Ravana goes to Sylvie's holding cell to find out B15 has been compromised by Sylvie. They escort Sylvie to where Loki is waiting and Ravana brings them to meet the timekeepers. The timekeeper questions the two of them but when Sylvie walks up, Ravana loops her back to where she was before. B15 shows up to unlock the looping device and gives Sylvie back her blade. The guards are able to take down B15 and surround them but they are able to take down the guards. Once Sylvie beats the guards, Ravana joins the fight to finish the job she goofed up on in the past. Loki starts getting serious when he sees Sylvie struggling against Ravana. Luckily Sylvie is able to beat Ravana and Loki finishes off the other guards. Once the fight is over, Sylvie beheads one of the timekeepers and they find out the timekeepers are androids. When Loki tried to confess to Sylvie, Ravana erased Loki before he could finish. This angered Sylvie and she makes Ravana tell her everything. Sylvie takes Ravana's tempad and asks who the mastermind is of the TVA but Ravana doesn't know. Right before Sylvie ends Ravana, she tells Sylvie that Loki might be alive still. She tells this to Sylvie because she wants to know who's at the top and why they lied to her. Also, when they erase someone, they are just sent to a place where they can't cause a branch timeline. Sylvie wants to know about the end of time so Ravana gets Miss Minutes to go through the restricted files. Once Ravana was not useful anymore, Sylvie was going to kill her, but Miss Minute brings up a timecraft that could pass through the void. Suddenly, TVA agents rush in to arrest Sylvie, but Sylvie erases herself to go to the void. When Loki wakes up after getting erased, he is surrounded by a bunch of Loki variants. Classic Loki tells Loki that they are at the void and the Lyth will eat everything so they better hurry to safety. Along the way, Loki wants answers and throws a fit but Kid Loki isn't having it because the commotion could bring a Lyth over. Once Loki calms down, the variant tells Loki what a Lyth can do. Kid Loki leads the other variants because he killed Thor. They go to Kid Loki's kingdom to avoid a Lyth. Once they arrive, they ask Loki why he wants to go back to the TVA and Loki tells them an important thing is there. They tell their life story to each other and Loki decides to leave to go back to Sylvie by killing Alive. Loki tries to recruit them but they laugh at Loki's ridiculous plan. When Loki leaves, he is surrounded by a bunch of other Lokis. The other Lokis take over the kingdom and we find out Boso Loki is the one that betrayed Kid Loki to become the new king. All the Lokis want to be king but before they fight, Alligator Loki bites off Evil Loki's hand and they all start fighting among themselves to see who will be the new king. On the other hand, Loki, Kid Loki, Alligator Loki, and Classic Loki portal out of the kingdom to leave the fighting. After Sylvie erases herself, she wakes up in the void inside a bus. Alive shows up to devour her but she checks Alive's past and runs away. 
Mobius shows up to save Sylvie at the perfect time and they ride off. Sylvie thinks the only way to find the mastermind is through Alive, so they turn around to head back to Alive. After the good Lokis escape the infighting, Loki convinced the others to help him get back to the TVA to stop them. Loki's plan is to find the weak spot and destroy it, so they watch a battleship fight with Alive, but in the end, Alive wipes everyone out on board. After seeing that, Loki wants to rethink a new plan because he doesn't want to be like those people. Kid Loki notices a car coming towards them, and when they stop, Loki goes towards the car because Sylvie is there. Loki introduces everyone, and Sylvie plans to enchant it so it brings them to the end of time because Loki's plan was garbage. They rest for a bit while Mobius talks with the other Lokis while Sylvie and Loki gets to share a lovey-dovey moment. Sylvie hopes Loki won't betray her and Loki reassures her he's done betraying the people who loves him. Back at the TVA, Rivana meets with B-15 who is locked up to find out what drives Sylvie. We find out it's for revenge, but Rivana's real objective is to find the real mastermind. When she is done with B-15, she gets Miss Minutes to get all the files about the TVA so she can meet the mastermind. Back at the Void, they get ready to face Alive because Sylvie believes once they enchant the Alive, it will bring them to the boss. Before the fight, Sylvie gives Loki a tempad, but Loki wants to stay with Sylvie, so he gives it to Mobius to teleport back to the TVA. Kid Loki gives Loki a blade and then they leave, but classic Loki turns back to help them. Loki offers himself as bait to get Alive's attention, while Sylvie tries to get a hold of a branch from Alive. When Sylvie tries to enchant Alive, it notices Sylvie and it goes after her, so Loki tries harder to get Alive's attention. Right before Alive devours Sylvie, classic Loki shows up in time to cause a distraction by building an image of Asgard. Sylvie gets Loki to help enchant it, but Loki doesn't know how to do it, so she encourages him because they are the same. When Alive is devouring the image, Loki and Sylvie gets a hold of a branch and they start enchanting it. Classic Loki starts running out of power to maintain the image and gets eaten by Alive. Right before Alive goes after Loki and Sylvie, they are able to enchant Alive, who sends them to a castle at the end of time. When they reach the castle, Sylvie is about to burst in, but the door opens itself. They walk in and suddenly Miss Minutes shows up to welcome them to the Citadel at the end of time. He who remains is impressed with them getting there and offers to reinstate them back into the timeline but without disturbing things, while the TVA continues its mission. They both decline the offer and Miss Minute disappears. She reappears at the TVA to give files to Ravana and ditches right after giving it to her. When Ravana is packing, Mobius shows up to talk and maybe erase her. She calls for backup but B-15 baits some agents to show them past Ravana before she was taken from her timeline. Back at the TVA, Mobius wants everyone to know the truth but Rivana argues that the TVA is necessary to keep the peace. Right before Rivana leaves, Mobius tries to erase her but he gets his ass handed to him. He surrenders and waits to be erased again but Rivana lets him go to look for free will. At the Citadel, they walk by four statues with one broken. They keep exploring and a door opens with He Who Remains, also known as Kang. Kang wants to talk with them in his office and the two of them are on guard, ready to strike. Sylvie tries to attack Kang but every time she tries, he moves to a different spot until he meets them at his office. Kang tells them it's been a long journey for them but Sylvie tries to end Kang again. Kang tells them they can't kill him because he already know what's going to happen next. He paved the way for them to meet him and shows them what will happen at the end. He knows they object to the TVA's mission but without it, everything will burn. Loki asks who he is afraid of and we find out Kang is afraid of his variants. He gives them a story of past Kang who was a scientist and how they would meet each other. Some of them were chill, but others wanted to conquer, so that's how an all-out war broke out. The first variant who found out about the different universes encountered Alive and weaponized Alive to end the multiversal war. Once he ended the war, he created the TVA to prevent any other branches from forming because he has gone through all the scenarios. That's why the TVA is a necessary evil to maintain the peace. Kang gives them two options, which are to kill him and cause another multiversal war or control the TVA to keep the peace. He's doing this because he is old and wants to give the power to the young ones. Kang felt something off and blurted out, We just crossed the threshold. Up to this point, he knows everything, but from here on out, he has no clue what will happen. Then Kang lets him decide the outcome, but Sylvie thinks he's lying. So Sylvie tries to kill Kang, but Loki stops her. She puts her blade on Loki's neck, but Loki wants to talk about it. She lets him go and goes after Kang, but Loki stops her again so they can talk it through. Sylvie thinks Loki wants a throne, but all Loki wants is to be with Sylvie. Loki thinks Sylvie can't trust people, and Loki can't be trusted, so Sylvie starts attacking Loki. 
They are evenly matched, but Sylvie gets the upper hand blasting Loki back with her powers. When Sylvie walks towards Kang, Loki throws a chair at Sylvie. Loki protects Kang again and persuades Sylvie to stop. Sylvie isn't having it, so she lets Loki kill her, but he can't do it, so Sylvie teleports him away to go after Kang. Loki reappears right in front of Sylvie with her blade at his neck. That stopped her from going after Kang while Loki confesses his feelings for Sylvie. Sylvie kisses Loki and sends him back to the TVA so she can kill Kang. She kills Kang and Kang's last word to Sylvie was Lisa. Then we see branches starting to form from the timeline. Back at the TVA, B-15 and Mobius watches the timeline branch out. Loki looks for Mobius while they were talking about the branching timelines. Loki tells him they can't stop the branches and what happened after Mobius left the void, but Mobius had no recollection of Loki. Loki looks at the statue to only see Kang there. Well, that's it for the recap of Loki Season 1. If you want Season 2, comment Sylvie. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.